Now, we have seen how the location challenge can be solved. Let's have a look into some of the other challenges. And I think one of the challenges that we see ahead is how to cope with different media in emergency communications. And one concept um, that we see of a specific value for some user groups is total conversation. Who of you remembers these kind of things? You know what it is? This is a tele typewriter or a TTY device. So you can see at the top of it, this is the place where you can put the handset of your analog phone to send a text message through the analog line. These devices have been used in many countries in order to give people with disabilities in hearing or speaking access to emergency services. Well, do we think that this is the way forward really for the future as well? Probably not. So with, in terms of accessibility for special groups, uh, there is a need to move away from fax or from TTY uh, in order to give them access to emergency communication. And one concept that we see that has been standardized so far with an ITF is total conversation, which is making use of combining three different media in one single session, such as voice, video and real-time text communication to communicate for people who are hard of hearing or speaking disabilities uh, with the public safety answering point. That being said, of course, this is of huge value for this specific target group. But on the other hand, wouldn't it be of overall value for all citizens as an additional channel to phone calls when you could share pictures or videos or type something? Couldn't it be an alternative channel to phone calls where voice just simply is not an option when you can't talk or where you're not allowed to talk when there is danger so close by that talking would put you into a more severe situation? Sharing context and being location aware, this is something that I believe, firmly believe, total conversation could bring to all of the citizens. So it should be bidirectional and it can include, of course, when this is coming alive, an element of public warning as well, giving guidance to people how to behave in specific situations. Well, looking into total conversation, this is something where we see how different media can be brought together. Let's have a look at another aspect of digital transformation, which is on the process side. So connecting processes across organizations. Let's have a look at the emergency service delivery chain here. We have the incident side on the left-hand side and the solved incident on the right-hand side. And this is what we are really looking for. So if someone is falling down a staircase and uh, is hurt badly, we hope that an emergency call can be raised to 112, triggering the emergency response process, ultimately ending in the medical care process to get the situation solved. And of course, there's a handover in the middle of these processes where, well, we believe it would be very, very valuable if we could hand over already additional information and additional data during these two half processes here. How could this look like? Who of you is aware of the emergency card introduced in Apple iOS in some previous releases? Not many are. So if you know that health app on your iOS device, and if you have looked into this already, you might have seen this emergency contact card. So this is a place where you can add your name, allergies, intolerances, medicaments taken, emergency contact type, in case of contact blood type, and so on and so on. Different data that can be of huge value for the first responders. And you know what? This data is accessible through the lock screen when it's uh, administered in such a way so that in case you are found in a dangerous situation and first responders come, they can have a look at that situation. So, but why keep this data only for the first responders? Why not using this data as part of the emergency calling process already in order to deliver a better experience to the citizens in order to receive response and in, in order to be helped better? So if we could pick that data, embed it 
into some data packages, into an envelope of information that we can just attach to the emergency call and moving that envelope with additional information over to the first responders that might be awaiting already the patient at the emergency room's entry door at the hospital and then leading into a more precise response in the healthcare process, in the medical care process. This is not only delivering better patient service, but as more and more organizations in healthcare become private organizations as well, it is better customer service as well. Think about this. And think about the scenarios that we are going to see once this chaining becomes uh, possible. Well, we could embed medical support centers in the emergency response process immediately. Think about this example here. We've got a patient, and this patient is suffering from a chronic disease, from diabetes. This is a disease well, which can be quite well controlled, and there's more and more elements from the IoT, the Internet of Things, like this Google smart contact lenses, that are looking into measuring specific body data. So in that case, this smart contact lens could, immense, could, could potentially uh, measure blood sugar levels here. So with blood sugar levels being constantly monitored, uh, there could be an app on the smartphone that is picking up that information and providing background information to a medical support center. So if our patient in this case has got a support contract with this medical support center on a probably five minute basis, uh, the measurement data is transferred into the database of the medical support center. If nothing is happening, if there's nothing dangerous happening, nothing is going to happen on the response side as well. But if the patient data is showing we are above some threshold that has been predetermined, we probably want to start warning the patient. And this could be an escalation in different steps. So in the first step, probably the smartphone itself would start shaking and warning the patient, you should take care of your insulin if you want to stay healthy here. So but if we would consider that this guy here is having the most um, important presentation in his business career just in the next couple of minutes, he probably might not be taking care of his body signals. So he might feel unwell and well in the second escalation, the emergency support center agent could raise a call to the patient asking him, well, you should take care right now before you're really feeling sick. But, well, maybe even this is not receiving received at the patient's end because his smartphone maybe is not in his pocket or is visible to him. So every call or every humming of the phone might not be seen. And, in fact, we might end up that the patient is uh, becoming unconscious. And in that case, probably the smartphone could automatically or via remote control through the medical support center, raise an emergency call to 112, attach the case data and attach the location data to the public safety answering point so that they can bring the first responders and that they can have a conversation with the support agent in the medical support center on behalf of the patient in that case who cannot talk anymore. So I think this is an example how emergency response can involve more elements than, than just a one-to-one -one communication which we have in our today's world. And how could emergency communication look like beyond 2020? So just follow me on that thought journey in here. If you are a firefighter and if you see this, you know something has gone wrong and I am here far too late. Well, because if response might have been faster, well, every minute counts in responding, this could have been avoided. And how could we avoid a huge bushfire? So think about this. Um, you might be on holiday and you might be a tourist seeing some smoke in the woods over there. And the first thing that you do right here, right now, you take up your mobile phone, your call 112, and raise your call to the public safety answering point. On this beautiful Balearian island here, this call has been received. And yes, um, well, based on the cell data from our mobile network operator, we know where this call is coming from, well, at least roughly, 
And if we would apply elements like a via I locate to this, we could even pinpoint this to a precise GPS position where the call has been coming from. But yes, well, we know where the call is coming from, but does this really help us with what the caller uh, is wanting to transmit to us? He sees that smoke somewhere in the woods. So where is this and how to first and uh, really quickly respond to this is quite interesting. So you could ask your caller, please hold up your smartphone, direct it to the smoke area that you see and share that direction with us. And probably in an incident like this, you might receive a couple of emergency calls. And if all call takers ask the callers to point their smartphones to that specific area, well, you could in the end identify where these lines cross. It's kind of a way of triangulation between these smartphones that give you a point or an area where you can expect the smoke being originating from. And now it's interesting. We are seeing emergency calling location has been solved, like we asked it in some slides before that already. And we can talk about process integration within the response process. So how could this scenario look like in the future? Well, having all of these emergency calls coming in, um, we probably would be very interested to send a UAV to the place where the fire is being detected to have a first impression what we could expect in here and what we should um, the, what, what kind of forces we should send in response uh, to coping with that situation. On the other hand, well, you couldn't really lift the drone immediately because there's an airport close by. So, in fact, this is probably one of the biggest challenges in drones in public safety and emergency services today, getting air clearance done. Now, with an Avaya next generation public safety answering point, based on Avaya Aura and on Avaya Breeze, we could pick the location information which we have derived from where the uh, fire might be and take that location information into consideration with a snapping that we have created, the drone lifter snapping. So just evaluate that location information, send it to the drone requesting to a route to be calculated, and then sending the calculated route back to via Breeze. In the next step of the process, we would send that route with a request for air clearance to the air traffic control center at the airport. And if they have identified, yes, the drone can take off right now, they can send and grant the air clearance immediately. And so the drone could lift off immediately, flying to the place of suspicion right here where the smoke has been detected. And guess what, what we are seeing when the drone is above the situation. Well, it's just a huge food street festival with a giant barbecue. And hopefully this is going to be what you're going to see in most cases where you see smoke. So I hope you enjoyed that session. Come and see us within uh, the demonstration area and continue the conversation. Happy to see you later.